Okay, so I explained a little bit about how you can use um, the basics, coconuts, to do to draw pretty much anything. Um, so if I, uh, I, some people have been asking me about backgrounds. Um, you know, I guess uh, I can show you a generic background that's maybe got. Let's do that deserted island. Let's let's, let's draw a small island. Um, you know, this is something I find I, I I can do quite easily using just the basic shapes. Um, first thing that's uh, kind of important is uh, figuring out you know where is this island going to fit within. This is just a, a lot of times you'll see me starting my drawings with an ellipse because this ellipse is essentially the same thing. It's it's a planar you know it's a it's a planar ellipse. I'm just drawing you know a surface for me to start building things off of. You know, I can put things off in the distance, I can make them closer. You know, that's essentially what essentially why I create ellipses. Sometimes, you know, I, if I want to look at something from above, then I'll make an ellipse quite round. So one one of the important things about um about drawing any kind of background is that it's important that you know what's your angle on the background. Are you looking at it from above? You know, are you seeing it from above so that when you start placing objects onto this this background, you know that they are situated somewhere on the ground. You know they they trying to figure out where to put everything is more important than actually trying to figure out what they what these things look like because um, you know you need placeholders. You need to know where your form is sitting so that you can wrap the objects on top to get that illusion. You can't get an illusion of um, of depth if you haven't defined space you know, to place all your objects on. Now I can go and I can say, you know, I want to have buildings on top of here, I can make little ones. Um, landscape, you know, people that say they have trouble with backgrounds are people who have trouble with form. Because whenever you're drawing any kind of background, it's really just a lot of creating lumps of stuff and then populating it with more stuff. <laughs> so first thing I'll do when I want to start off the background is, you know, I'm, I need to establish a bit of space to draw this background on top. This is only for outdoor backgrounds. This is only for one of many, many, uh, like practically an infinite type of landscapes that you could draw. But the first thing is I need to establish a bit of space so that now, you know, whenever I put something down, I'm putting it on this ground plane. And I'm not stuck to this one ground plane. See, I can, if I want, I can take this ground plane and I can divide it in the middle, and I can create a channel, right? A lot of um, being able to, well, if you want to be able to, to create backgrounds, you have to be able to sculpt the form. You have to be able to say, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut away a part and raise a part. I can, you know, make an addition to this part. I'm going to raise up a step, you know, raise up a terrace. This, uh, the, the, you know, these are things that you need to be able to do, and then you know, my my backgrounds off in the distance. So creating backgrounds is just a lot of, um, you know, first defining a space, you know, defining a, a ground plane, and then putting forms, you know, creating forms out of that. So I mean, it's, if I wanted to, I could create just some random shapes, and then use the basics. You know, I have to use the basics to give these things some form, some amount of depth. So having these, you know, big random blobs, you know, I can use that to help me, you know, it's it's 2D at first, it's two-dimensional noise at first, it's just 2D blob, uh, you know, a bunch of 2D curves, but by, through my knowledge of the basics, I can go in and give these things some form. Now, it's still very it, you know, th there's still not a lot of information here. It's it's just it it gives me the 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 general masses, but it's hard to tell if I'm looking at a pair of hills or, or if I'm looking at some rumple you know rumpled bed sheets or you know cloth. Um, it's up to me and how I, I work the, de the, the 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 details. If I want to, I can make these I can make this you know this this weird lump into you know a bunch of hills, and I can have you know some little buildings on top and. You know, I can put additional buildings. I, I guess I can figure out, well, maybe there, there has to be a roadway, so uh, I'm going to smooth that. Well, let's see. It's going to be kind of hard to get a roadway. You know, you can't just have a roadway that goes up like this and this because no car is going to be able to drive up this road without falling off. So what do they do? Well, they, they, they would go in and you make a, a road that goes up at an incline like this. And, well, I, you can wind a road around the whole thing. So it goes around, it comes around the other side, and it winds up. You can have, you know, a winding road like that. Um, 
let's see, what else can you do? You can um, maybe you can have a, a wind. You know, if if you, let's say there's a there's some parts of the hill uh, of this mountain that that can't be built on, right? You you have to if you're a city planner, you know, if you're a municipal planner and you're trying to figure out a way to get a road to get people up there, then you have to solve the problem. You have to take on the burdens of the inventor to deal with this problem of uh, getting a car up there. You know, it's possible that that cars cannot make their way up. You have steps, but you know, if you want to figure out how to get a car up there, well. You're going to need maybe a, a gradual incline on the road, and then you're going to have to figure out. Well, let's see. If I want it to to turn, I, let's see. I'm going to need to figure out. Um, you're probably going to wind up having to carve into um, into the road, so, into the uh, mountain somewhat. So let's see. If I have uh, a roadway like this, now mind you, I'm not going to I'm not going to rush through this. I'm going to just take my time, and then I guess what you can do is you can cut off. There we are. You can cut away. A bit of the um, the mountainside, right? The thing is that is that humans are capable of you know shaping the land, you know, by cutting away small portions there. Now they can, and this part here is going to be cut off part. So you know, to to make this go up, let's see, I'm probably going to have to, I want it to go up again. So I'm going to have to figure a way to there cut that away, and there make that into a gradual path there. So I'm just shaping, you know, I'm going to cut that away. So I don't have to get go and commission a zillion bulldozers and, and you know, cal caterpillar machines to go and, and do deal with this, but, you know, that's what you have to do, is you have to find a way to shape the landscape so that it will, now I, now I can put a, a guardrail, I have a guardrail that goes around, you're going to have guardrails all the way back, and then this guardrail comes back down on, on the side. So, you know, that's essentially what, you know, when, whenever you're creating backgrounds is it's you're sculpting the land. You're, you're going through and you're going to carve the land up and you're going to find a way to make so that this land is now suitable for a car to drive up, you know, for people to, to go places, you know. And, you know, once we're up there, you know, I can take this, take these cliffs, I can, you know, cut that away. Um, you know, I, I guess at, at, at the base of the of, of the, the hill you may find large rocks. Um, these are just arcs, right? I'm just using arcs. And there are more arcs and I can, you know, use small ones. Anywhere where the, where the cliff meets the ground here, you know, there's this kind of a, a sharp junction, right? You don't usually find that out in nature. So what you do is you take you know, you take dirt and you fill that in so it becomes a gradual slope where you have, you know, lots and lots of little little rocks. The bigger rocks will be at the bottom, the smaller ones will, are going to fill in the gaps in between. But this is essentially how I handle detail. And even here, you know, you, you might have a an overhang. It's kind of an, an overhang like that. I'm going to I'm going to, you know, break up the the edge of that. And once again, when I start pulling, uh, pull that in there, I can, uh, oops, turn on my drawing. There, I can cut that away, and then, so there, I have that kind of cross section. That means the land is going to, it's going to come around behind. It's going to come around behind like that. So, it's just a lot of this, you know, take the forms, cut them away, you know, the land is there for you to sculpt, the, the land is there, it's, it's just, it's just a lot of this stuff, it's, uh, you know, this, this stuff can be made of dirt, can be made of, made of coconuts, can be made of flesh, can be made of whatever you want, and I guess when it comes to, you know, maybe drawing trees, you know, if I, if I want to have any trees on, on here, I guess, well, I'm, you could have some trees, you know where you place the trees. Where do the trees grow? If you look at mountains, you'll find that there's a that that there's a tree line. There's a certain height at which trees will grow. You know, I had really really tall mountain. If I here, let's this is a separate background, and you have a really 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 high mountain. You're gonna find that the trees will only grow up to a certain height. So you're gonna have trees on there, a lot of trees here. But then up to a certain height, you're gonna get a lot of these um very scraggly trees. I 
forget the word for it, but you're going to get a lot of stunted growth because up here, here's where the wind is much, um, is, the wind's quite fierce, so the, the temperature's, you know, a lot lower, the barometric pressure is, is uh, just the air pressure is very low, um, so trees will tend not to grow above this tree line, but everything down below you're going to have trees. So it's important to understand that whenever you're creating a, a, some kind of background, some kind of location really, is that you are aware of the geography of your location. You know, are you in a mountainous region? Are you, um, you you'll find that with, if you look at the Earth, the Earth which has, which is split up into various continental or tectonic plates. And what happens is there are some fault lines where new ground is being created. And right, you know, where they have the ring of fire, you've got, you've got the parts where you have a lot of volcanoes, a lot of volcanic activity. These areas are where you'll find that new, you know, you're going to have a lot of volcanoes. That's, that's where ground, that's where, where the, the, the plates are created. And you'll find that the ground goes away from those areas. Then it will turn towards, you, know, you need to understand a bit of a geology. Um, when if I have another fault line here, also with volcanoes, also you know, a volcanic area, this is where, again, you're going to have the ground is going to be turning towards this way. So volcanoes, volcanoes, that's an area where where molten magma, if you, if, if you studied you know, how the Earth is formed, there's sort of an iron core, and there's a lot of this magma, there's a lot of these convection currents of, you know, the inside of the Earth is, is full of, well, magma, lava. And the hot, the hot stuff is less dense. It's going to rise up. It's going to reach the surface, and it's going to turn away. You know, when it hits the top, it's going to cool, and it's going to go back down. So you get the circulatory action. And what that does is, well, right here in the, in these areas where it's really hot, you're going to get a lot of volcanic activity. And this is where new ground is being created, and where you get volcanic eruptions. So those are volcanic mountains, uh, because all this magma is being forced out, and it's going to form there. And these convection currents are going to start carrying the plates. The plates are these chunks of rock, which are floating on top of all this magma. And they're going to go, and they're going to travel away from the convection. You know, these convection currents, they, they go in all directions. And at some point, you're going to find that, well, maybe there might be another volcanic section here, where you have the convection currents. And one piece of ground is going to be forced under another. Here is where you get your earthquakes. You know, anytime the, the ground sticks and builds up energy and then it, it releases, that's when you get an earthquake. And right here where these plates collide, this is where rock starts to buckle, right? One of the one of them is gonna buckle up, the other one's gonna buckle, maybe go down. But this is where you get a lot of mountainous regions. Here where the volcanoes are, you get new rock. New rock, rich earth, rich soil, lots of tropical growth. Over here in the mountain ranges, where you get a lot of earthquakes, higher mountains, um, you know the soil is, is is a lot more is is maybe a little bit more dead. Um, it doesn't have all the, the the minerals that that come you know from the, from the new ground. Um, you know it, it's it's important to understand sort of the, the cycle of the Earth, the cycle of any planet, um, how how this stuff is created. So that way you know you have an understanding of of um, geology in in re regards to uh, geography. Geography just being the location. Geology being the, the type of land that you have. So, you know, you, you'll get all kinds of, there's, there's so many things that you can study. Um, you know, there's, there's Wikipedia, there's Google, you can really look this stuff up and find out a little bit about, um, about how the, 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 world, the world is made and how we get all these different landforms. Um, things like this, this, this area here where the ground is cut away, that's erosion. That's when, oh, you know, if you take a a piece of bread and you put the, the bread in, in, in some coffee while well, it starts to crumble away. Oh, that, that's the same thing. It's just you've got all that dirt. Originally this hill might have been a lot larger and might have been this big, but just countless years of, well this is maybe a shoreline, which countless years of, of water splashing up against this area have just carved away all the dirt. You know, it's, it's eroded and so it's starting to overhang. Eventually this thing will, will the, the claim will, the, the sun the sea will just claim all of this dirt. So again, it's 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 an understanding of you know geological science that's going to create those kinds of landforms. And because the this area is this side is this is the side that faces the sea, I'm going to carve away that side, but I'm going to let the other side 
you know, remain gradual. But anywhere you've got water, if, if there's water over here, you're going to get a lot of this carving. Right? The water is going to carve away, it's going to erode, and it's going to create those funny shapes. That's what happens. And then again, if I want things to curve, you know, if I want things to curve, then I'm going to, I'm going to adjust my line spacing so that there, I'm going to increase there. I'm going to increase the frequency of the lines as it turns away. This is why you need to master the basics, why you need to be able to make things turn towards you. And, and this, this art area here, if I want this to curve towards me, I can do the same thing to increase, you know, the, uh, as this becomes, you know, as, as the surface becomes tangential to my point of view, I'm going to have to increase my, my scribbling. Um, with these rocks, you know, I can do the same thing there. As it, the rock turns away, I have to increase like that. Or if I'm dealing with lighting, lighting going down this way, then I'm going to keep the top lit and I'm going to increase my shading there like that. Now I can shade rocks, right? It's, 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 that's what you need to be able to do. I'm going to have to, and now I have to sort of blend, you know, one side to the other. Then I'm going to have to blend that. This, this area here, this is a sheer face because this has been carved away by, by humans. And I'm probably going to have to wind up extending some of this. You know, how do we deal with this junction? How do you deal with that junction? This is, this is you know, a lot of this creating background stuff doesn't just happen. Um, you really have to think, you know, how, how did people deal with this little problem here? I guess, you know, if anything, this, this whole area could be made out of, you know, just concrete. This could be concrete. You could have, you know, sewer holes and whatnot. You know, they, you can have storm drains. Right, you're gonna need storm drains and you're gonna need sewer outlets because these if you got buildings up here, right? These little buildings up here, well, buildings with toilets. People got poop, people got sewage, sewage gotta come out of somewhere. So even the uh, even the island needs an anus. <laughs> and so it comes out of here. These are the assholes of the island. You need that. Um, it's 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 that's you know, every city has them. Um, and if you have an island with and, and you've got internal plumbing there's toilets and bathrooms, then by all means, you know, this is how you get your detail. You, you find a way, you know, maybe the, the plumbing is not at the ground level, maybe it comes out here and it drops out, right? It's, it's up to you to design the, the island, to design the, um, the sewage, the sewage lines of, of the island. You have to become, when you were, when you become an artist, like I say, I keep talking about, I, I say this frequently, I, I talk about the burdens of the inventor. If you're going to become an artist and you want to draw islands, you want to draw civilizations, little areas where there are people, you have to learn a little bit about municipal engineering. You have to learn a little bit about civil engineering. Um, you know, how do you, you know, how do you plan for these things? How do you, how do you, how, how do you deal with the problems that, that, that a city, regular city has to, to deal with? If you want to draw clothing, then you have to understand a little bit about what the tailor has to do to make clothing, you know, construct. How do you, how do you get that sleeve to attach? How do you stop it from bunching out? How do you keep it, you know, how, how does the person get into and out of the clothing? You have to become a bit of a tailor. Um, if, if you're going to design weaponry, then you have to figure out, well, what kind of ammunition does the thing shoot? You know, what is it used to kill? What's this, this weapon used for? Um, you know, do you, do you need, does it need a scope for long range? These are, these are things. When you design weapons, you have to be, take on the burdens of the, of the weapons inventory. You have to figure out, you know, who's going to use the gun and what's it going to, you know, what's it going to be like if you're holding this gun in your hands. So, you know, it's, 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 it's a lot of that. When you're dealing with landscapes as well, I mean, aside from just the, muni the municipal planning, understanding how the, the, the earth works, understanding, you know, uh, plate tectonics, understanding, you know, these, uh, the ge geography, you know, having to look up all these different locations to understand, you know, what all these places will look like. That, that's going to help you a lot. And um, whenever you feel that you need to, you know, create a landscape, you don't have to know everything, but do study the thing that you're about to draw. You don't have to know, you don't have to like, you don't have to have like, every, there's no way that you can have all the knowledge in your head at once, but at least whenever you give yourself a new task, you know, spend some time and research it. Spend some time to research it because um, back in my old, back in my day, um, before the internet, there was a time, you know, before the internet or before the, the internet was really commonplace, we had libraries. We had to go out and we had to look at books. And that was a royal pain in the butt. And it was really hard to find information. Now it's all available at the touch of a button. So you really should research the things that you are about to, to draw. 
you know, it's, it's, there's, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, because an imagination, the, the imagination only, your imagination can only produce things that you've seen before. It's up to you to rearrange them and to figure out how they should be arranged and where to put them, um, you know, that kind of thing. It, it's, it's, you know, for plants, you know, trying to figure out things like the, the tree line for the plants, um, being able to figure out that if you have an area where there's a lot of trees, if let's say out here, I have this, this area here that's heavily wooded, okay, so there's a mass of trees right here, I just drew a, a simple oval canopy, then at the edges, this is where you get the smaller trees, right, the smaller trees, smaller little things and and small weeds and stuff can't grow in 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 a forest because there's too much tree cover you'll eat the, the kind of plants that'll live there are usually parasitic ones they're they're plants that that are meant to to live on the shade uh that don't need a lot of light plants that that thrive on moisture things like you know moss and and uh lichens you know that's what you'll find inside the forest but on on the outskirts you know you're going to find maybe the smaller and smaller trees or smaller plants and being able to draw things like grasses, well, you know, I, I've probably shown some of you this exercise where you draw, this is the pin cushion, right? You're just drawing pins, pins that are always, notice that, they're always pointing towards the center. And as the pins get closer to the center, they get shorter and shorter, right? Because, well, if you, if you look at a pin straight on, it's just, it's just a dot, right? And, of course, the pins can crest the horizon, they can go on the other side. This is uh, kind of a hair ball or pin pin cushion ball. Now, what this exercise is good for is if you need to, you know, deal with uh, any kind of landscape. So let's see, I'm gonna, okay, there, I've got that. Well, I want to populate this 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 lump of ground with grass. Then, you know, being able to draw lines that go out radially. See, it's like if I had a center here, I'm always drawing towards that center. And I will shift my center. So sometimes I may have one center, two center, three centers, like this. And I'll go one, then two, there's the other center, then three. So you can see how there's a center. This one, I kind of, there's a center here, then I kind of blend between here. There's another center. That's what I do to create my vegetation, only at the edge. Okay, that only works over here at the edge. Oh, out here, I might wind up having a re you know, reposition more of these little little rosettes and I will layer them. See I can I can layer and the further up I go I just take a simple hill like this. Okay. The further up I go, um, the higher the frequency of the rosettes. So there's this. I have another layer and then another layer and they get closer and closer and closer together. Now there's more detail, and also my lines get smaller because I'm going over the crest of the hill. I'm going over the horizon. The the, the dirt's turning away from me. All right, this is how I get this this illusion of of depth. What's that? That's it's the same old coconut, same old coconut. It's just that, and even this area here with the the, the wooding, you know, the the where I've got the uh, the trees, these wooded areas. Um, same deal. I'll have high, like low frequency, higher frequency, higher frequency. There. Now I've I've managed to turn that this little row of trees here. That's same old coconut. Um, yeah. Even here, I can there. And I've outdoor outdoor scene scenery. You know, it's it's that easy. It's really that that easy to come up with this kind of stuff. And then um, if you want to paint something like this, then okay, it kind of helps to know uh, the time of day, you know, is it morning, noon, night, again, geography, every place you go to, um, every place around the world, you got to be aware of more places than just your hometown, but everywhere you go, there's going to be um, different climates, travel, do travel, or at least, you know, look at some travel brochures, and check out some of these great neat, neat places that, you know, that, that, that people decide to live. And you'll find that there's so many different climates out there. There's you could have, um, you know, if I if I was doing a, an Arctic climate, then out in an area where it's mostly winter, you're going to get a lot of overcast skies. So I'm going to leave the the, the sky as white. Um, you know, I'm going to have uh, I guess I'm going to leave a lot of snow on the top of things. But then 
you're going to get a lot of grays. You know, it's not going to be you're not not going to see too many colors. Um, any kind of greens that you get are going to be really saturated. In fact, there's not much color to put into here. I'm just going to tint lightly tint my vegetation and just keep it really, really simple. You know, even a, sim a single tone, you know, might be enough. Um, on the other hand, if I was doing something that was maybe a little bit more, you know, coastal, tropical, then, you know, you're going to get, your, your palette's going to change. You're going to get, whoops, different colored skies. Time of day is important as well, because There, I needed, you know, to blend that down. Now I can start figuring out what colors to to put over everything. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the same color over everything. I'm going to find all the areas that are covered by. Well, since I have I have no colors behind here, I'm going to just fill everything up. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to find all the areas that are covered in dirt. So I'm going to find the dirt color, the dark dirt color, which is a saturated gray slightly brownish. I'm not putting in any light right now. All I'm doing is I'm just trying to figure out where do I place all of the materials. Uh, this cliff side, I'm not, I, I used to think this was a wooded side, but you know, I'm going to use these as cliff sides instead, so I'm going to give them that, that dark gray. And now I can start lighting. You know, where's my light coming from? So I'm going to just start hitting all the areas. You know, if I have light coming from the side, then I'm going to light up all these side regions. I'm going to let the trees cast a, cast a light sideways. There we are. Just hit a few. Oops, that area. Hang on. That's that's dirt. So I'm going to have to choose a, a, the, the desaturated lighter color. And right? That was fast, wasn't it? That was really fast. So there you go. That's what you need. Um, oh, right, and, and of course there's there's darker shadowed areas, so I mean, while I have, I, I go in there, I light the lit areas, and I'm going to have to put in areas that, that I know are going to be a little bit darker. <laughs> Sorry, I got this terrible nose whistle. And I'm trying to get rid of it. Hold on, let me uh, cut the mic for a second. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's annoying because, ooh, gross, I got snot all over my monitor. Okay. And, oh, it's still there. There we go. Nope, that nose whistle is really there. Sorry guys, you're gonna just you're just gonna have to deal with it. And then I can take the sky colors and I can just start carving away. This is you know different ways that you can paint things. Um, take this green. I'm gonna find a darker version of the green and just find all the areas that are enclosed and hit those up. Take this darker here, there, and just fill that in. So all, you know, the the idea is that I start with a relatively shadowed color. I find the color, you know, wherever the materials are are going to be lit. I hit those areas. I, I take the the even darker shadowed color, and I hit those areas. You know, to darken any areas. The the idea is that if I see any large flat regions. For example, a flat section like here, then it means that, well, you know what, maybe I can go in there and I can start putting in some detail. Or I can take some of these these bright sections and I can start doing the same thing with the uh, with the zigzagging. Hit these areas. Same old coconut. That's all you need is the basics. The basics will just stick with the basics. I can Put that area there. <laughs> Man. Nose whistle of doom. Take these dark colors. And you can see. There we are. I'm just doing the same old zigzag. Now, of course, these areas here, there are no plants. But, you know, you can still carve away a little bit. You just have to use larger strokes. Here I guess I can just 
break that up just to add some visual interest. I can cut I can work the other way, I can cut down. So this is what gives it that. If I take off the line layer, right? Now of course when I take off the line layer a lot of my dark shading goes away. I could just throw a layer on top and paint on top of my lines if I want to. So you know that's yeah, that's that's basically it. Alright, so find ways to use those same old coconuts guys. I'll catch you later.